Shakespeare, England's best writer. His works are studied in schools all throughout the English-speaking Western world as benchmarks in the history of the English language. Hey everyone, I'm Corey with EssayPro.com, and in this video, our expert writers have prepared a detailed exploration into a Shakespearean classic. Throughout the video, we will look at the background, the characters, the five acts, the themes, and the symbolism of this timeless play. A bit of background. Hamlet, well known and revered as William Shakespeare's most famous play, is believed to have been written sometime around the year 1600. Set in Denmark, the play follows a young prince on a quest for revenge. Spoiler alert, his evil uncle Claudius killed Hamlet's father, who was the king of Denmark. But Hamlet is no mere blind revenge seeker. His search is for the moral ground, questioning himself and the justice of his actions. Hamlet's inner dialogue is what makes the character such a compelling study and relevant to the present time. This story has been retold and readapted a countless number of times, like in our childhood favorite, The Lion King. Remember who you are. Just replace Hamlet with Simba and Claudius with Scar. That's Hamlet. <laughs> Hamlet is considered one of the all-time greatest works of literature. Now, let's study the characters. Hamlet. Hamlet is the Prince of Denmark. He's the son of the deceased King Hamlet and Queen Gertrude. At the beginning of the play, Hamlet just returned from his studies to find his father dead and his mother married to his uncle Claudius. Scandalous. Within a month! Hamlet's darkest suspicions are confirmed when the ghost of his father, the deceased King Hamlet, appears to tell Uncle Claudius was behind the death. The serpent that did sting thy father's life now wears his crown. Oh, my prophetic soul, mine uncle. This sends Hamlet on a revenge mission. Claudius. King Claudius is the brother of King Hamlet the senior. He kills the king, takes his wife, and takes the throne. I like his style. Claudius is portrayed as a cunning and manipulative character, but one that's driven by basic instincts. Unlike Hamlet, Claudius kills and manipulates without putting much thought into the morals behind his actions. Before the play opens, Claudius seizes the throne by pouring poison into King Hamlet's ear, killing him, and passing it off as a snake attack. Next up is Gertrude. Gertrude is Hamlet's mother, who was formerly married to King Hamlet Sr. After his death, she married Hamlet's uncle, Claudius. Gertrude does not seem guilty about marrying the man who killed her husband, which makes Hamlet resent her. It's pretty weird. This was your husband. Look you now what follows. Here is your husband. Polonius. This character is the chief counselor of the king. He is also the father of Hamlet's girlfriend Ophelia and her brother Laertes. Polonius is an unlikable character in the play, described as having a big and disrespectful mouth. Hamlet refers to him in Act 2 as a tedious old fool. After Claudius convinces Polonius to spy on Hamlet, Hamlet kills him on accident, triggering Ophelia's madness and death, and then reaches the play's climax. A duel between Hamlet and Laertes. <laughs> okay. Ophelia. Ophelia is Hamlet's girlfriend in the play. She is the daughter of Polonius and sister of Laertes. Ophelia's brother and father try to break her and Hamlet up. Polonius goes as far as forbidding her to marry him. Woo. After her father's death, Ophelia goes insane, speaking in riddles and rhymes, among other signs of madness. She ends up killing herself, obviously. That's the only thing to do. Either do okay. <laughs> okay. After her father's death, Ophelia goes insane. She speaks in riddles, rhymes, among other signs of madness. She ends up killing herself, either deliberately or by accident. The ghost. The ghost of Hamlet's father is often referred to King Hamlet to distinguish him from his son. The ghost appears three times throughout the play, first to soldiers in the beginning, then to Hamlet, sending him on a mission for revenge, and lastly to Hamlet again, rebuking him for not having killed Claudius faster. Hamlet, remember me! Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. These two characters always appear together. They are childhood friends of the protagonist who are commanded by King Claudius to watch over the prince and to find out the source of his so-called madness. They are portrayed as flatterers and sycophants, and Hamlet sees through their guise. Pirates kill Rosencrantz and Guildenstern before Act 5. Horatio. Horatio is described as Hamlet's friend. He is the only person in the play who is actually on Hamlet's side. It is unclear what the origins of Horatio are or whether he is noble or holds a position in courts. Horatio is the only major character who survives the events of the play. Now that you've met the characters, let's continue on to the play itself. The play is actually around six hours long and is very detailed, 
but you can still ace your Hamlet essay just by knowing the sequence of events, themes, and the symbolism used in the play. Oh, vengeance! Or you can just watch The Lion King. It's like an hour and a half. Father! Don't leave me. Act 1. Prince Hamlet is introduced as the protagonist of the play. Before the play begins, Claudius murders King Hamlet, who is Hamlet's father. Then Claudius marries his widow Gertrude and seizes the throne. The Kingdom of Denmark, where the play is set, has had a long time feud with Norway and have feared an invasion from their neighbors for quite some time already. During a casual cold night patrol, two sentries, Bernardo and Marcellus, and Hamlet's friend Horatio, see the ghost of the late King Hamlet. They vow to tell Hamlet about the ghost. I think I saw him yesterday. I saw who? My lord the king, your father. The next day, during the court of King Claudius and Queen Gertrude, Hamlet is in despair. He finds it hard to believe that his mother married Claudius so quickly after his father's death. Break my heart, for I must hold my tongue. Horatio meets Hamlet and tells him about the ghost, and Hamlet is determined to see it. On the platform, twixt 11 and 12, I'll visit. Elsewhere, during the royal court, we meet Polonius, his son Laertes, and his daughter Ophelia. Polonius says his farewells to Laertes, who is heading off to France, giving him solid fatherly advice in Act 1, Scene 3. This above all, to thine self be true. <laughs> to thine, I don't know what the hand gesture is, okay. This above all, to thine own self be true. Okay, before, whatever that means, before he leaves, Laertes warns his sister Ophelia to avoid Hamlet and stop overthinking his attention towards her. Beware, Ophelia do not trust his vows. At night, on the ramparts, the ghost appears to Hamlet and tells him that Claudius is behind his murders. The ghost urges Hamlet to avenge his death and then just vanishes, like a ghost or something. Hamlet, remember me! Hamlet tells the sentries and Horatio that they must put on an act, acting as if Hamlet had gone mad to disguise his plans for revenge. However, deep inside, Hamlet is unsure of whether to trust this ghost. He doesn't look like a trusting ghost, apparently. Oh, a ghost! You're a motherfucking ghost! So act two. The act opens up with Ophelia rushing to her father and telling him that Hamlet is behaving strangely. Polonius tells her to ignore all Hamlet's advances, saying that love has driven Hamlet mad. I had not noted him. I feared he did but trifle and meant to wreck thee. Next, he goes to inform Claudius and Gertrude about the prince's behavior. Here, in the king and queen's chamber, we also meet Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, two childhood friends of Hamlet. The royal couple tasks the two to investigate the cause of Hamlet's strange behavior. Something you have heard of Hamlet's transformation. Polonius tells the king and queen about Hamlet's behavior and his theory about Hamlet being in love. Lord Hamlet is the prince out of thy star. This must not be. He even speaks to Hamlet himself, but Hamlet fakes being mad and insults Polonius. When Hamlet meets his old friends, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, he quickly realizes they are spies. Whoa. The two scholars came from Elsinore with a troupe of actors whom Hamlet asked to perform several plays for him. They stage a play about the Trojan War, and Hamlet, being impressed, plots to stage another play called The Murder of Gonzaga. Can you play the murder of Gonzago? In front of Claudius. The events of this play are similar to what Claudius did with King Hamlet, and Hamlet seeks to study Claudius' reaction to determine his guilt or innocence. Hamlet doesn't trust the ghost. This ghost is bad. <laughs> this, this, he doesn't trust the ghost. Like, yeah, he's an asshole. He stole my wallet. <laughs> Hamlet doesn't trust the ghost and seeks firmer evidence against Claudius. Act 3. In the next act, we see Polonius forcing Ophelia to return to Hamlet all of his tokens of love and study Hamlet's reaction. Meanwhile, Hamlet is walking around the halls giving his famous monologue in Act 3, Scene 1. To be or not to be? That is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to take arms against the sea of troubles by opposing it. End them! Oh, is that alright? I don't know. Anyways, this is Hamlet musing on life and death saying he is at a point that he only sees suffering in life and that the only thing stopping us from killing ourselves is the fear of the unknown. When Ophelia enters to return Hamlet's tokens of love, he lashes out at her and it is unclear whether he is sincere or he's just playing the mad prince part. Claudius sees Hamlet's reactions, concluding that he is not mad for love. During the murder of Gonzaga, a play which was organized by Hamlet, 
The prince watches Claudius closely and studies his reactions. The play disturbs Claudius and he storms out of the room, resolving to send Hamlet away to England. I came not nor stands it safe with us to let his madness rage. After studying his reaction, Hamlet is confident that Claudius is guilty of killing his father. Now might I drink hot blood and do such bitter business as the day would quake to look upon. Hamlet's mother Gertrude summons Hamlet to her chambers in distress. On the way, he stumbles upon Claudius, who is kneeling, attempting to pray and repent. It hath the primal, eldest curse upon it. A brother's murder. Hamlet believes that if he kills Claudius in prayer, Claudius' soul will go to heaven. Therefore, he decides to spare his life. For that same villain sent to heaven. Oh, this is hire and salary, not revenge. At Gertrude's chambers, Polonius is hiding behind some curtains to protect Gertrude from her unpredictable son. Hamlet arrives and has a loud fight with his mom. Then he hears something moving behind the curtain and just stabs it because he thinks it's Claudius and he accidentally kills Polonius instead. <laughs> Anyways, the ghost reappears to Hamlet, warning him to not delay his revenge or to upset his mother. Look you, how pale he glares. Do not look upon me. Gertrude cannot see the ghost, which further fuels her belief that Hamlet has gone mad. You see nothing there! No, nothing at all! The scene ends with Hamlet dragging the corpse of Polonius away. Now, Act 4. Gertrude tells Claudius that Hamlet killed Polonius. Gertrude's a snitch. Hey, guess who killed Polonius? <laughs> Hamlet is sent to England by Claudius, who conspires to have him killed there. Um, farewell, dear mother. Thy loving father. He leaves a sealed letter for the King of England with Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. The letter instructs the king to kill Hamlet. Hamlet discovers Claudius' letter and forges an alternative letter, sending Rosencrantz and Guildenstern to be killed in his place. Around this time, King Fortinbras of Norway is crossing Denmark with his army, aiming to attack Poland. Meanwhile, Ophelia had gone mad from the death of her father and from Hamlet's rejection. She goes around handing out symbolic flowers and talking in rhymes. He is gone. Her madness reaches a climax and she drowns. It is uncertain whether her drowning is accidental or a suicide. Laertes, Ophelia's brother, who had just come back from France, is enraged by Polonius' death and his sister's madness. After a session with Claudius, Laertes is convinced that Hamlet is responsible for everything. But my revenge will come! Yeah. After learning that Claudius' plan with killing Hamlet failed, he proposes that he and Laertes face off in a fencing match. Laertes will be given a poison tip foil, and Claudius will poison Hamlet's wine glass. Revenge should know no bounds, so let me work him in case he wins, to make sure that he dies. The scene is interrupted by Gertrude, who reports that Ophelia has drowned. Your sisters drowned, Laertes. Act five, the final act. We have an iconic scene with two grave diggers discussing the death or suicide of Ophelia while preparing her grave. Hamlet comes by with Horatio and talks with one of the grave diggers who takes out a skull of a gesture which Hamlet remembers from his childhood. Hamlet looks at the skull and says, Alas, poor Yorick. And thinks about death and mortality for some time. In Acts 5, Scene 1, Hamlet states, That skull had a tongue in it and could sing once. This might be the pate of a politician, which the ass now will reaches, one that would circumvent gold. These are the thoughts about how even those trying to evade God's punishment cannot escape death. Ophelia's funeral procession comes with Laertes in the end. Hamlet and Horatio hide, but as soon as Hamlet finds out that this is Ophelia who died, he reveals himself. This is I, Hamlet the day the devil take thy soul. Laertes and Hamlet have a showdown at the graveside, but the fight is broken up. At Elsinore, Hamlet tells Horatio what happened on his journey that Claudius ordered his death, but Hamlet reforged a letter to order the deaths of Rosencrans and Guildenstern instead. This is when a courtier delivers the fencing challenge to Hamlet, who accepts it despite Horatio's pleas. Before the duel, Hamlet learns that Claudius bet on him winning the duel against Laertes. The bet is part of Claudius' scheme to cover up the fact that he tried to have Hamlet killed. For me. Hamlet, you know the wager. Very well, my lord. Your grace hath laid the odds on the weaker side. Hamlet has no interest in gaining his evil uncle's respect, even less winning him the bet. During the match, Hamlet is in the lead. Nothing either way! How about you? Oh, no. No, 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 no. 
Gertrude raises a toast for him, using the poison glass that Claudius attended for Hamlet. Claudius tries to stop her, but she drinks the glass. Like the wine in the glass. She doesn't drink the glass. It's the glass. Gla okay, sorry. All right. <clears throat> Claudius tries to stop her, but she drinks the glass. Gertrude, do not drink. I will, my lord. Laertes, realizing that it is all about to go south, slashes Hamlet with the poison rapier. In a scuffle, they switch weapons, and Laertes also gets wounded by the poison blade. Gertrude falls to the floor, poisoned, and dies. In his dying seconds, Laertes reconciles and tells the whole plan to Hamlet. Before he dies, Laertes reconciles with Hamlet and both accept each other's apologies. Change forgiveness with me, noble Hamlet. Heaven, make thee free of it. Hamlet then runs to Claudius and kills him. Drink of this potion and follow my mother! As the poison is about to take Hamlet too, he hears that the Norwegian king, Fortinbras, and the army is marching through the Danish area. He names Fortinbras as his successor to the throne. Horatio almost commits suicide in Hamlet's honor, but Hamlet tells him to live to tell the story before dying in Horatio's arms. To tell my story. Fortinbras arrives at the palace to bring news of the death of Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. Seeing the whole Danish royal family dead on the floor, the prince takes the crown and orders an honorable military funeral for Hamlet. He is buried as a soldier. And these are the five acts of Hamlet. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Now, moving on to the play's themes. Because there are many themes in this play, it is one of the most discussed pieces of literature ever. One of the most prominent themes is the theme of action versus inaction, where Hamlet continuously questions the morality of his decisions, whether he should or should not kill, or be or not be. The most exciting thing about Hamlet is not the actions, but rather his inactions that fuel this discussion of mortality. This theme ties directly in with the theme of death. The theme of religion, honor, and revenge occurs throughout the story. Characters in Hamlet constantly lecture each other about how to act. Claudius' parent talks Hamlet on how to properly show grief. Polonius lectures Laertes on how he should behave at university. And Hamlet lectures himself in his monologues on what he should do. The code of conduct in this play are largely based on religion and aristocratic values which demand honor, stating that revenge is necessary if honor has been spoiled. However, as the play progresses, Hamlet finds out that these codes of conduct are contradictory. Religious codes oppose revenge, saying that revenge could put Hamlet's soul in danger. The idea of justice becomes confused, and Hamlet's own musing on the idea of revenge slowly muddies his judgment. Some scholars even say that after Hamlet returns from his trip to England and encounters the pirates, he behaves very differently, as if he's talked himself out of killing Claudius. The theory goes on to say that Hamlet's lust for revenge is refueled by the death of Ophelia and Claudius's intimidations and attempts to having him killed. Another prevalent theme is appearance versus reality. As each character is trying to find out what the other characters think, everybody is spying and trying to decipher everybody else. Women are another often discussed theme of the play, especially how the protagonist sees women and their social positions. Hamlet's view of women is dark and his pretend madness sometimes becomes actual madness when he gets furious at women. His mother's actions prove to him that women are not to be trusted, that their beauty is just deceit and sexual desire. Other themes of Hamlet dive less into the actual play, but the history of societal values. Many scenes from Hamlet exemplify the English codes of conduct at the time, or expose the corrupt and gritty nature of the English monarchy. And now, onto Hamlet symbolism. The symbols are evident and apparent, for example, the ghost. I've always loved you. The ghost is usually understood as a symbol of hard times coming ahead, being regarded as a bad omen in the state of Denmark. The second symbol we see are the flowers of Ophelia, which appear just as she begins to lose her mind. She gives everybody flowers, describing what it stands for and expressing her feelings of betrayal by offering the flowers so symbolically. It can be interpreted as a cry for help in disguise and could be seen as Shakespeare poking fun at how nobody understands symbols and what they actually mean. The third symbol is probably the most famous one in the play. It's the skull of the gesture, which Hamlet picks up. The story regards it as a symbol of death, decay and uselessness of a person after their death. The skull makes Hamlet think about his destiny and how we all turn to dust when we die. Poison is another symbol in the play, representing deceit, betrayal, and corruption. Claudius uses the poison to kill Hamlet, foreshadowing the ending. The innocent fencing match between Hamlet and Laertes appears to be deceitful and corrupted as each blade is poisoned along with Hamlet's wine. Poison also works as a metaphor, as the whole royal family has been poisoned from the very beginning, betraying and corrupting one another. 
Shakespeare also uses things like the weather to set the scene. When the weather is bad, it's an omen. When it's good, it means good times are coming. That said, these symbols are ambiguous and can be overinterpreted while just simply being props to set the mood. If you enjoyed the video, hit the subscribe button and leave a like. Leave a comment below if you have any questions or want us to explain something further in detail. I'll be here to answer all these questions. And guys, thanks for watching. You have a great day.